Let me ask you a question. Do you think that sexually explicit lyrics and provocative music videos, what do they do to you? Do they outrage you? Do they entice you maybe to buy more of that music? Well, you know, since Elvis Presley swiveled his hips, critics have said that sexy music damages our children. Some say that men have always exploited women through music like this and that now even women are starting to exploit women. Today we're going to meet the artists who perform it, the DJs who play it, and the activists who, well, deplore it. Twelve-year-old girls listening, you can tell them all you want. Don't do it. If your mother is smoking cigarettes in front of the children, the children are going to smoke the cigarettes. We're going to meet little Kim and ask her mom what she thinks of her daughter's sexy, hardcore songs. But uh, sometimes I do say to her, you know, girl, I should have taken you to church more. <laughs> <laughs> but let's first meet two superstars of hip-hop. She exploded onto the music scene with Junior Mafia and now has a provocative top 20 solo album called Hardcore. And he is the CEO of Bad Boy Entertainment. Entertainment, making their first talk show debut, performing their top ten hit, No Time. Please welcome Sean Puffy Combs and Lil Kim. No time for fake uh, 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 Everybody get up out your seats with me, please. Get up out your seats, get up out your seats. I got no time for fake ones. Just sit your crisp out with these real ones. From east to west, coast, spread love, son. Y'all still sitting down? Come on, y'all gotta get up out your seats now. Right there, get up out your seats. Yeah. Clap your hands like this. Hold on, down. Puff Daddy pumped the Hummer for the summer. I follow in the E class with the goggles. Mighty six models, bad click on a stroll. Cruise control, nothing make a woman feel better. The professors and I'm a brother, but the lovers and mad cheddar. Chilling in the desert, my up. Trying to stick a brother for it. If you say so, then I'm the same chick that you want to get with. Lick me where it's hot. Gotta hit the spot. If not, don't test the boom, boom, nani, nani. Come on, y'all, come on. Mom, step it. What y'all say? Put it up. Keep them up. You change the words of the song just a little bit for the television today, right? <laughs> well, you know, we we try to do what we can to be, you know, as presentable as possible. Uh -huh. so. You know, some, I, I, some of the lyrics, and I, and I listen to your CD all day, and it's great music, I have to say. <laughs> but, you know, I don't have kids, and there's some parents who say, oh, the music's too sexually explicit. Where our children's minds are going down. We've got a young lady with barely any clothes on up here. Where's the world going to? And what do you say when people say that? Well, I say make sure that you give your child parental advisory. If you don't want your child listening to the music, then it's up to you as a parent to make sure that the child doesn't listen to it. Mm -hmm. But also get that child gu guidance and let her know, you know, this is what she does. You know, you don't have to go that way. So yeah. parental advisory is definitely a must. Let me ask you this. Of all the things you could write, because the two of you are some of the most talented folks on the scene, you could write any kind of lyrics, talk about anything. Why so much sex? Well, we do believe that sex does sell. I mean, look at Elvis Presley, look at Madonna, mm -hmm. look at Luke. I mean, it is selling. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
basically that's we, the market yeah, we mm -hmm. try to be real and we talk about what we know right so you run bad boy entertainment do you in do you encourage your young artists to put a little sex in their man because that's what's going to help us sell this album no you don't no i don't it just happens no, it doesn't just happen. I mean, with Kim, I'm a producer. I produce one track on her album. Mm -hmm. And on my label, which is Bad Boy Entertainment, right now we, we don't have a sexually explicit artist. Oh. You know, so we, we have um, Notorious Big, Faith, 112. We have a w wide range of music. But if I encounter an artist that has sexually explicit lyrics, as, as she said, there is a time and a place for all of that, just like there are um, shows that come on late night on cable. Mm -hmm. And as um, you as parents have to let your kids know, not to listen to this if you don't want them to listen to it. And the singles that we put out and the singles that we put on radio mm -hmm. are cleaner versions of songs, even the songs that I produce for other artists that have their own mind and their own way of thinking and their own style. So you make one really explicit, some would say downright raunchy tune, and then you do a cleanup of the same one so you can play it in other places and still, like you did here. Right. No, no, this was not a, this record right here wasn't really a dirty version. Mm -hmm. I mean, a dirty song, it just had one word mm -hmm. that was S-H-I. Oh, I know that yeah, one. Yeah. Okay, all right. I mean, I don't, I don't, <laughs> she, 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 didn't do a, she didn't do her most sexually explicit song on the show. But you, have to, you, have to, you have to listen to the album for that. You you, and and do, you, do you get a lot of heat? I mean, do people write you and say, you know, I didn't like that album. Yeah, I'm afraid, or that, that cut on the CD. Yeah, I do get heat, but um, I would say 85% of it is positive. Positive. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, because a lot of people say, I don't understand what happened to music. All of a sudden, I mean, people are doing this and that and singing all about it. What, what, what has happened in the industry that has made this type of music so popular, especially among kids? I think right now in hip-hop, there's, there's um, you can talk about sex, but there's different types of music that's going on. It's just like... Um, Showtime and HBO, they have different types of programs, mm -hmm. or even ABC, they have different types of programs, and that's what's going on with hip hop. It's, it's multifaceted. You have your artists that talk about sex, you have your artists that talk about um, just straight up um, gangster rap, then you have also, you have artists that are more on a positive note, mm -hmm. then you have, you know, gospel rappers, you have R&B, mm -hmm. hip hop rappers. And speaking of gospel, I'm a very spiritual person, and I believe in my God 100%, and he's who. He's who brought me here, and because of him, I made it. What did your mother say about all this? Well, you can ask her. She's here today. Well, we are going to ask her for sure. In fact, what does Kim's mom think? Well, we're going to find that out for sure. We're going to meet little Kim's mom who says, well, why don't you just come on back and find out? We'll be right back in a minute. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Question, does sex sell music? If you were listening, if you could see the studio audience in here while that little clip was playing, everybody was getting into the groove. And yes, I believe the answer might be yes. Does it make somebody lots of money? Well, little Kim says indeed it does, and she's here to prove it. I want you to meet her mom also. This is Ruby Jones Mitchell, who is little Kim's mama. Welcome. <laughs> a little bit about that before we talk to mom because I, I can't wait to hear what your mother thinks about your sexy videos and the sexy lyrics and hey, some people would say not sexy but just downright raw and explicit mm -hmm. why do you choose that type of music and does it sell is there an attraction obviously I think there um, well it's not that it was like uh, it was chosen for me but it was just something that you know I knew how to do and I wrote about it from my, you know, from my past life. And I do think that sex does sell music. I mean, perfect example, Madonna, mm -hmm. uh, Luke, mm -hmm. Elvis Presley, Too Short. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of people who have make, made money from it, but I don't encourage anybody to just go and write about sex because it's gonna sell. Mm -hmm. Do what you feel naturally. When your daughter said, Mom, I'm gonna make it big. I'm gonna change my name, it's gonna be Lil' Kim, I'm gonna make lots of people sing and snap their fingers, and I'm gonna make lots of money. 
but I'm going to sing about sex explicitly. What was your first reaction? Well, actually, it didn't happen uh, that way. <clears throat> um, you know, she kind of just, this just sort of happened. It wasn't something that she, you know, she talked about. I know from a child, she always was interested in the music industry. You know, she always wanted to sing. She was always getting dressed up and, you know, just just doing her little thing in the mirror, you know. And um, she's doing a lot in front of a, <laughs> a, 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 a lot of things now. And it doesn't. When you see, you don't go, girl. You stop doing that. You don't feel that well, way. There are times when I do say to her, you know, because I've listened to her album and some of the lyrics are a little bit strong. But uh, sometimes I do say to her, you know, girl, I should have taken you to church more. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but all in all, you know, first and foremost, you know, she's, uh, she's a, a, a good artist, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, you know, she's an adult, and um, this is what she chose to do. So, you know, I'm here, and I support her as much as I possibly can. Look at me. Up. You said that a lot of your lyrics and a lot of the reasons that you've chosen sexual, uh, being ex explicit with sex, is because of your past life. What do you mean by that? Well, um, on my album Hardcore, I talk a lot about my past life. It, for example, in songs like Spin a Little Dough, My Feeling, and Not Tonight, people, you can hear about it. They, you know, I, I give it flavor to make it sound good in the song, but you get my album, you'll know. So tell us a little bit about who you are. How did this little girl grow up? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn? Yeah. And what kind of life did you have? Tell us a little I had a bit. street life. Street life? Mm -hmm. What was that life like, Mom? Tell us a bit about what that was like raising a daughter. Because I think it's really important that we understand that a lot of our young artists are drawing upon their life experiences, and that's something you can't take from folks. So help us understand a little bit about little Kim's growing up. Well, actually, um, <clears throat> when she talks about, you know, the hard life that she had as, had, had as a child, um, you know, I was a young mother, and I was going through a very difficult divorce, and well, there was just a lot of uh, uh, problems there. You know, the situation wasn't all that great, so therefore, you know, I was, uh, I had to move on, you know, per se, you know, and, uh, and, and in doing so, you know, my children kind of suffered as a result of it, but, you know, in this world, we all have choices, you know, and sometimes we make bad choices, you know, but just because you make bad choices, that don't mean that you have to just stay stuck, you know, there. Mm -hmm. You have to just, you know, move on, and, uh, and you, know, that's, you know, that's what I chose to do, and thank God today, you know, we're in a better space. We had to rise above all of that, you know, and, um, like, you know, like I say, you know, I love my daughter dearly, and I'm here to support her as much as I can. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is, uh, yeah. People really appreciate that because I think one of the things that we're seeing here is no matter what you think about what your daughter is doing as an artist, what, what I think most people do appreciate is seeing you supporting her through even having to answer some tough questions, which you may have to do today, Lil' Kim, because a lot of folks say, oh my goodness, Lil' Kim's going to come over to my house next and be singing through, through my kid's bedroom door. What would you do as a parent? And I'd also like to know what sex meant to you growing up because a lot of young girls like this 12-year-old right here who loves you to death, she listens to your music. She, you may be surprised, parents, but this little girl told me she listens to it on a walk, man, and mom and dad don't know what she's listening to. I'd like to know how you're influencing that young lady. Also next, why one New York City police officer vehemently opposes Lil' Kim's sexually explicit music. We'll talk with uh, more of us in the audience, too, who were snapping and clapping to Lil' Kim right after this. You can grow out the sexual organs, but it's still, huh? 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 And folks are naked. Come on. Robert, what do you say? Wake up. There is no clean version. Play the music at a proper time when children are not listening. You have for a second, and I give you the full plunge. Uh, once you on, once you on, iced out ankle breaks the for scenery. You know what I mean? It's bananas, ain't it? It's ain't it. <laughs> I know. We all love to sing the catchy chorus, and you know, I like that song, I must admit myself, but you know, I don't have kids. 
So I'm not really sure what that means to parents who listen to those words and are afraid that their kids are listening too. So I'm going to learn a little bit here too. Does sex sell music? Well, the little Kim here says absolutely. It certainly is helping her career. Little Kim, I started reading some lyrics here. How you like it, baby, from the front, from the back? Give that beep a smack. Bet your man won't do it like that. Can't work the middle because this thing is too little. Let me grab your ta-tas, do the cha-cha. Now, they're little kids. This little girl's 12 years old and keeps singing the lyrics. Hi, Chanel. <laughs> Hi, Chanel. Chanel's a big fan of little... Come here, talk to me, Chanel. How old are you? 12, right? 12. 12. And how do you listen to this music? How do you get away with that in the house? Um, I listen to it on the Walkman. On the Walkman? On the Walkman. <laughs> and why are you crying? Because that's your, because you're so happy to be in front of Lil' Kim. That's how much she loves you, Lil' Kim. I love you too. Now, Chanel, some people are concerned. Does your mommy, what did you, your mommy do if she knew you were listening to words like that? She wouldn't let me listen to it because it has so much curses and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, a nice little girl like you, what you doing listening to music like that? What, how would you answer that? I like it. You like it. <laughs> <laughs> how do you help little 12-year-olds like this understand that the music that they're listening to should not affect their lives? We're, we're concerned about 12-year-olds singing about sex like this. Yeah. So what do you say, Lil' Well, Pam? I definitely think that Chanel is too young, but mostly I think that she listens to it for the sound and for me being a young, positive, black young woman doing, what I, doing my thing, you know what I'm saying, and getting over a hump. And I want you to make sure you keep God in your life. And me, as an older person to you, I want you to, you know, be sure, you know, I feel that you're too young to be having sex. You probably, you're too young to be listening to my music, too. But if you're going to listen to it, you know, make sure you do the right thing. Don't go out and have sex for the wrong reasons. And if you do... And if you do, if you do decide one day that you want to have sex, use a condom, because I'm pretty sure you're old enough to get pregnant and catch a disease. Yeah, you talk to your mother and father about that, too. Okay. Boy, I can understand, parents. It gets scary. <laughs> My next guests say that artists are going too far to sell their music, especially when they affect little girls like Chanel. Sit down, baby. When Toys R Us pulled all the lifelike guns from their store shelves, why, it was a tremendous grassroots success for my next guest here. He is the founder of Love Yourself, Stop the Violence. I'd like you to welcome New York City police officer James Davis. Joining us is the president of Morality in Media. He's the watchdog of what gets played on radio stations and television stations. Please welcome Robert Peters. I'm just going to throw it out to you guys. Just, just tell me, when you listen to the lyrics, you see the impression that it makes on 12-year-olds, your gut reaction is what? Here we go. Uh, <laughs> okay. As a New York City police officer, in Brooklyn, where I'm from, bed as well. I organize a Stop the Violence march through our neighborhood. I'm tired of seeing us killing us. We get mad when the other community does it to us and we're marching their neighborhood. It's time for us to be responsible and stand up against what we're doing to ourselves. Now, our beautiful artists are in a position to send a message to our people, a message of deliverance, a message of prosperity, a message of rise up, you mighty people. Then why? Open up your legs and show us in a negative light. Stand up and let your light so shine. You're beautiful. Your message should be a message that is beautiful. Twelve-year-old girls listening, you can tell them all you want. Don't do it. If your mother's smoking cigarettes in front of the children, the children are going to smoke the cigarettes. So represent with your lifestyle. And these radio stations, just one last thing, uh -huh. these radio stations. Now, Debbie Does Dallas, a rated XXX video, should not be on a Nickelodeon station. It should not be viewed by children. And little Kim says something, and I support her, and I'm glad she said it. She said, this is not made for children. So let us all rise up and hold these radio stations accountable. How can you have a, radio, a rating system in the movie? How can you have a rating system on television? And there's no rating system on the radio. How can you have a discretion label on, uh, on, on a record and then that same record is played during the hours when children are listening. Let's wake up, America. Robert, do you 
you think that that music like what little what we just heard from Lil Kim is hurting the morality of our nation? Do you think it goes that far, really? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't single out Little Kim for hurting the morality of our nation. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of things hurting the morality of our nation. There's the pornography industry, there's the mainstream film industry, there's TV, and yes, there is the rock industry. Uh, but uh, our take on it, our focus is really more of a legal focus, and uh, one of your producers sent uh, the hardcore tape over, and I listened to it this morning. And in honest opinion, I suspect it isn't obscene for adults, which means it's protected by the First Amendment for adults. But I'll state honestly, just an opinion, if I were a local prosecutor and I discovered that somebody in my community was selling this tape to children, I would have one of my staff transcribe that tape and then I would listen to it once again reading through the lyrics. And at that point, I might take, decide to take legal action in my community against persons who are selling it to kids. And a second legal issue, which you handled, I thought, very discreetly is that there is a broadcast indecency law which means that uh, at least during certain times of the day lyrics like are in Little Kim's hardcore album in my opinion it would be against the law to air that. I couldn't even say some of it because I listened to the CD today too and the music was good but the lyrics boy and and you know what I gotta admit I'm walking around listening snapping and the next thing I knew I was singing the lyrics and can't catch myself it does get catchy up next we're going to continue this conversation and we're also going to ask does Ed Lover from MTV and Hot 97 FM does he catch heat for playing some sizzling songs too we're going to wrap with this MTV superstar right after this Especially explicit music played on your radio when you or your children least expect it. I mean, how many times have you been sitting there and then the music come on and then you, you, you can't believe what you just heard? I mean, how does that happen? Let's meet two national personalities who might be able to help answer that question if you have it. You know him from Yo! MTV Raps and Hot 97 FM. She also is on Hot 97 FM and E! Entertainment Television. Please welcome Ed Lover and Lisa G. <laughs> Lisa, do you play these 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 explicit sexual songs on your radio? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> and Ed, you say it like you're proud of it. We play clean versions. Clean versions. And if there's not a clean version, we do our own edit to make sure that it's a clean version. Right. And we also talk about the lyrics. If we think something's a little racy, I know Ed and I and Dre, we talk about the lyrics of the song. Let me just ask you, and, and look, Kim, it's only because you're here. I'm not picking on you, but I just need to get a good example because you can respond so we can keep... Do you, do you have to doctor up little Kim stuff? I mean, oh, you, got, you, you doctor up Kim's like you was a surgeon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to know what they are supposed to be because Ed calls me at home and say, Kim, keep up the good word. When they stop talking, then you worry. That's but right. They, but they also do what's right. Like he said, they do have a clean version. Tell me. Let me answer this for us all, just looking at an overall view. How has Lil' Kim, in terms of all the music, how does she stand out in this music? I mean, is she known as one of the most explicit? How does she... No, she's no more explicit than, than her male counterparts are. Mm -hmm. And Kim is, is nothing more than um, what Millie Jackson was. She's outspoken and she stands up for the rights of women, and I applaud her for being a, having enough courage to be that person. Thank you. Kim knows that I love her because she is who she is and she makes no bones about it. This is who I am. If I dress like a hoe, I want to be and, and I'm proud of it. Whoa, Whoa. Did you see Whoa. Officer Davis's face and Robert? Right. At just the <laughs> same time, um, you know that if you listen to Little Kim album, this is what you're getting. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you can't falter for that. Uh, well, I think hoe oh, was such a good word to use. <laughs> 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 Davis, I'm going to let you speak. Robert, I'll let you speak let, as well. Let me try this. I'm 34 years 
girls of age. And if I want to watch Vanessa Del Rio, and uh, if I want to watch a rated XXX video, I'm a grown man. I have that prerogative. But you can blur out all the sexual organs all you want. I still know what's taking place. Give these children some credit. You can blur out the sexual organs, but it's still, huh, 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 and folks are naked. Come on. Robert, what do you say? Wake up. There is no clean version. Play the music at a proper time when children are not listening. Let us be mindful of our children. They cannot rightly divide between what is reality and what is entertainment. Even Let if us they, raise even if, the but, village but, but, together. But What's if, the name of that movie what, there? I want to pick that one up. Go <laughs> on. But listen, Officer Davis, they're saying that they clean up their music. You're saying that's not enough at all. Well, Robert, what do you say? Well, I, the word that uh, caught my attention was the H-O word. And uh, again, I guess that immediately I thought of, what a great message for kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I ask myself a lot of times, you know, what causes kids to do what they're doing? You know, I start running down the list. Now, I think generally speaking, it's not parents who give kids the values that are getting them in trouble. Uh, generally speaking, they're not getting it from their teachers, although clearly in some cases they do. I, I don't think they're getting it from their churches. So that leaves two sources. One is peers and the other is culture. Now, where do their peers learn these things from? That pretty much leaves culture. So kids are learning from culture. Now, I think Officer Davis brings the point that kids can either learn something good and positive that will help them in their lives, or they can learn that it's okay to be, you know, that H word, I guess. It, but I don't think that's the I message know, that kids need to hear. And if you think that's a no, great I message for your oh, station... No, we'll continue this argument right after this commercial break. Just one note, by the way, Vice President Al Gore's wife, Tipper Gore, went before Congress to get sexually explicit lyrics banned. Ed Lover goes, oh, brother, we're going to get your reaction to that. Up next, we're also going to meet a writer for Rolling Stone magazine who says it takes a lot more than just sex appeal to sell music. And I will get to your comment right after this. We'll be right back, folks. talking about whether sex sells music today and I and during the commercial break I, I met the Slater family here and there's a 10 year old in this family and you said that you were very struck mom by watching that 12 year old Chanel over there so impressed with Lil Kim what hit you um it hit me that she was so impressed with Kim's music and the lyrics I've listened to the CD so I know the sexually explicit lyrics my 14 year old son gave me the tape and told me here my I don't want it but he has guidance. He has us in our life, and we're guiding him. I'm thankful for that. What about the young people? Like you say, it should be up to the music industry, the radios, you know, to not play this music. They can pick up these tapes and these CDs anywhere. They can copy them from friends, from, from older kids. You know, what about the children that don't have that guidance but in their life? Somebody you know to tell them. If music to were to blame, we would have had a generation of drug addicts. Uh, we do. From Elvis we and do. Mr. Beale. We're not, 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 we're Okay, right now we're talking about the sexually explicit music. I'm not just saying music. Why can't we sing songs about telling people that it's not okay to go out here and open your legs to anybody and have sex and with anybody? People do that. Can, yeah. there, are, there are plenty of records like that, but that's not the world is not all bubble gum and candy. No, what happened? And if you, I got, I got children too. All right? I got a 13 year old daughter. I got a 10 year old daughter, and God bless me. Last Tuesday, I just had my first son. First time. <laughs> kids 100% and I teach them right from wrong and until my daughter gets of age she is not allowed to listen to Little Kim but Kim puts a parental advisory sticker on the album. From Mr. Slater here and then Kim I want to come to you and then I know you want to say something too Davis go on. It's true that we live in a sexual society there's no ifs ands what's about it but we also have to take into consideration that there are degrees in that sexual society point blank we are adults we have a right to tell these young people, you are not supposed to be listening to this. There are people who can tell you 
her songs and don't know their multiplication tables. Our priorities are in the wrong place. And I bet you, I bet you when you was coming up and my mother is standing, sitting there right behind you, there were songs that her father wouldn't let her hear because in those days it was too sexually explicit for them. What does little we Kim on, have to say? We get older, we grow, I, and it becomes more answer, wide open. Yeah, go on, Kim. I just want to ask a question. Well, I just want to make a statement, really. You said, what about those that don't have guidance? Every child that's out there, because when I was in the streets, I looked up to somebody. It's a, that person, whoever I looked up to, always took responsibility in telling me what was right and what was wrong. But even though I did what I wanted to anyway, inside of me, I knew what was right, too. Because I what you're doing is right. Exactly. What, what you're saying well, is what you're see, doing this is, is right. Is that's, the, that's the same. Well, I'm not saying in my, from where I come from, this is what I've known, this is where I've been. You know what I mean? But when someone is looking at you, when when someone is looking at you, when someone is looking at you, say this. When someone is looking at you, do whatever you're doing. They're watching you. That's a peer that you. You but are then, their peer. Exactly, but then it goes back to what he's saying. When you was younger, and someone told you not you to do something, problem. and you, when you did it When you anyway. were in the street, like you said you were in the street, there were times when your mother mm -hmm. did not have control over you exactly. because of the situation that your mother was going through. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, then let's say that same young person who does not have a mother who's out there working, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. listening to a 97, mm -hmm. with, no, with no guidance whatsoever. <laughs> That's big problems. Yeah. Let's yeah. bring in my next guest because uh, when, some people say it's censorship if we're going to start telling what, what Ed can play it's and what censorship. he can't play and what our kids can listen to. My next guest is certainly no stranger to censorship. When Tipper Gore spearheaded congressional meetings just to censor music, she got a big old hug by Tipper Gore herself. She's a freelance journalist for Entertainment Weekly and Rolling Stone magazine, and she's the lead singer of a rock and roll band called Brain Surgeons with a new CD called Box of Hammers. I'd like you to welcome Deborah Frost. <laughs> welcome, Deborah. <laughs> Deborah, you're in it from every end I here. Sure do. Just talk. What is your reaction to what you've heard today? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people have really valid viewpoints. I mean, you and one problem if you censor things blankly is you're just cutting it out. You're not considering the context, and that's what you've got to do. I mean, yes, sex sells. But who's buying? Mm. You know, that Stop. Is really We've got to. I, I want to continue that point right after this. Sex sells, but who's buying? What can you do about sexually explicit music invading your home and influencing your kids? We'll talk about that also next. is quite some calendar, Kim. Uh, <laughs> tell me a bit about this calendar that, you, that you're in here. Ooh. Well, I didn't know the calendar was going to be put together, but when it was put together, I was very happy with it, and I love you the were. calendar. Okay. Um, there, there are, you are in some rather provocative positions and the rest, and you, that doesn't bother you, huh? No, because it was all about me being sexy and revealing my self-esteem from when I was young. Mm -hmm. And I had guys tell me I wasn't, I was ugly, I was this, I was that. And it's make, I'm feeling sexy. I mean, what makes me any different than Naomi Campbell, who sometimes models with her, models topless? Mm -hmm. Let's get back to the censorship issue because we what, the, the statement that you Can made. Can I make a quick comment sure, about Robert. I would say uh, I've seen some pinup calendar. I would say it's a pretty mild calendar for an adult pinup calendar, but uh, for kids, I don't think it sends the right message. I think you know that's the main concern here. I would also say that while little Kim is clothed in the calendar, certainly nothing you know grossly indecent, mm -hmm. she's striking poses. The only difference between your calendar and a typical porn calendar is that you have your clothes on. But again, for adults, it's one thing. For children, it's a different thing. What was that reaction? You went, oh. Well, I, that was a very profound point. The only difference is that she's got her clothes on. Um, not much. Not, not much. much. <laughs> There's a parental advisory sticker on that. So that has what? A, yeah, it has a sticker on, on it. it. Sex, sex is a part of life. I'm saying, regardless whether it's music or not, kids is going to learn about sex. You know what I'm saying? It's the birds and the bees. They're going to want to know how they came. But some people they are afraid if they hear music like what Lil' Kim sings, they're going to start having sex a little too soon. Let me no. say one thing. Go on, Ed. Two things. First of all, I agree with Officer James Davidson. I always fight 
in Hot 97 all the time. I'm one of the leading people that fight for certain times of the day. I don't think certain songs should be played on the radio. I always fight about that, and I always fight to make sure the stuff that we play is as clean as possible. But when you start attacking hip-hop, hip-hop is nothing more than a reflection of society in which we all grew up in, all right? For me, because I stay close to my community and I know what's going on. The next thing you know, you're going after Bugs Bunny, Rob. <laughs> Bugs Bunny kicked, he kicked people off a cliff. Did that make little kids run out and kick people off a cliff? What about the Roadrunner? Come on, come on. All right, you're going to get her first. Can I do something with you? Go on, Judge. Let me say this, and I want to say thank you to Ed Lover. He's, since we've been doing this, he's always been out there fighting on the forefront with us. But just one difference. Uh, Bugs Bunny is, first of all, a cartoon character, and these are real-life people that young people emulate. But forget that. Just one other Let me try one other thing. Just, I'm not here to pick on Little Kim again. Those calendars, these records have parental advisories on it. She's a grown adult. Adults do what you want to do. We're not targeting adults. We're talking about the children. Mm -hmm. So re remember one thing, if nothing else, it takes an entire village to raise a child. I don't have children, but all the children are mine. Mm -hmm. I don't have a family like this man, but all the children are mine. We must all take an active role in raising all the children. That young man on that street corner, that's my son. That's my brother. We must all take an active role. And what do you say? I think parents need to take more control of what their kids are doing and be more aware. And I also think it's hypocritical of us to just blame, like, Little Kim or producers of songs. I mean, there's a demand for it, and if you don't like it, don't buy it. There's She's not going to make a, crack. a song there's that a no one's going to buy. Crack. There's a demand for drugs. Just because there's a demand, that does not make it right. Understand that. Just because there's a demand, that does not make it right. There's a demand for guns. There's a demand for crack. There's a demand for drugs. Just because there's a demand, mm -hmm. that but does I'm not right. make it right. What do you what say? Strong analogy. Yeah. A, a comment from Lil' Kim here. Lil' Kim. I think you're not hurting nobody. You sound good. You rap good. So do what you got to do to get paid. Thank and don't you. listen to all the negative Thank critics. Thank you. So Lil' Kim and Lil' Caesar are going to debut and perform their sexy new single. You might want to hear this, so don't go away. We'll clean it up, though. We will be right back in a minute. <laughs> Does sex sell music? That's what we've been talking about today. And it might help sell the latest single by Lil' Kim. Now debuting her latest hit single, Crush On You, from her top 20 album, Hardcore, here's Lil' Kim with Junior Mafia's Lil' Caesar. This, ah, uh, Lil' Caesar. Ah, uh, yeah. We're going to that. Uh -huh. I love her. Uh, we gonna do it like this, get up y'all Do I be buying V's, so all my girls be I and C's uh -huh. Coming backstage, dying to get pleased uh -huh. You got me, I rock, see Versace and linen Why do you spot and grinning, a bunch of foxy women Why do you speed ball with cars, that's about uh -huh. it I get close, much to me, for my stylist uh -huh. Cruise in my Lexus, land with no balance Why do you walk the street until your feet get callous Take you on the natural high, like a ballad uh -huh. It be all good, toss your clothes like a salad uh -huh. When it's all over, put your vote in my ballot. It's my daughter, I'm, I'm out in your alley. Spend the night in the new seats palace. Uh -huh. It be all good as long as you don't act childish. Why, Why you standing there with the crisp in your cup? The worst come the worst, keep this on, on the hush. Uh, I know you see me on the video. True. Uh, on the radio. True. Uh, but you still don't pay me no attention. Listening, Listening to what your girlfriend's mentioned. He's a slut, he's a hoe, he's a freak. Got a different girl every day of the week. It's cool. What's your deal? I'm gonna let you know. Oh, it is. Hey, yo, shorty, won't you go get a bag of the leaves? I'll be right here in the bronze. All sequel. Why you count your juice thinking I'ma cheat you? The only one thing I wanna do is freak you. Keep your stone set like I'm my own baguette. And I'll be doing things that you won't regret. Little Kim or Queen B, so you best take heed. Shall I proceed? Yes, indeed. I'ma throw shade if you can't get paid. Throw you up to your girl like the army grenade. You can slide on my ice like the escapade. In the chicka chiaya with the marmalade. Who be not you? Oh, yes, who's he? I even dig your man's style. 
but I love your profile. Whisper in your ear, get you all shook up, but don't hush. Just keep this on the hush. I know you see me on the video. True. I know you heard me on the radio. True. But you still don't pay me no attention. Listen to what your girlfriend's mentioned. All right. Look at my Caesar. Before we say goodbye, just uh, some, some thoughts here. I just want to say that the people you were talking about that grew up through that drug era are the people that today make computers, have taken us into the computer age, are going to take us into the 20th century, and that this issue is about responsibility. Drugs and so forth is not the issue well, there. The issue here is parenting and responsibility. Well, Mama, kids, what do you say? Kids got and I'm stuff. a mother of four, Kim, and they listen to your music. My daughters go to Catholic school, and I'm going to tell you something. They may sing it, dance to it, but all of them are straight A students. So you know what? Madonna did it. You can do it. Keep up the And I was an A student, too. Thank you, girl. Parental guidance is necessary, but I have a problem when, when you talk on the interviews and articles about what you like to do orally and what you like to receive and all that. I mean, stuff like that's your personal business. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you want to air that out there. A lot of people are reading that and seeing that on TV. Kim, why don't you respond to that? I agree with you, but a lot of times um, they ask you these questions in which, you're, you know, sometimes you are subject to answer and sometimes you aren't, but at the same time, People readers want to hear that because of my image. Yeah, you know what I mean? And that's because, and, and listen, let me say one more thing. That's because of my image. You won't see me at a grocery store and without performing. You know what? Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. The other thing is that I think as little Kim grows as an artist, and I hope that she will, she may develop other dimensions in her music. I mean, she, she is a very talented lady, and I think as a, sex does sell, but it may not sell forever. You're going to grow We're up. We're going to say You're goodbye, to everybody. We keep watching our show. We'll see you next time on Rolanda. Ed, finish it up for us. Go on. Ooh la wee wee, say la wee.